but I'll talk about the first and last, and she'll talk about the second and the third. The first bill forms what do we call the Dade, Ohio Board. It consists of all the statewide office holders, people from the legislature, three from local government, one from the Ohio Board of Regents representing higher education. This body will provide advisory capacity to the legislature on what the latest standards are nationally, internationally, on what open data should be. So we're talking about, should it be an XML format? What does it mean to be machine readable? What kinds of records should the state be promoting to be online? We obviously can't do everything. It's just too massive for us to do everything overnight. So we're gonna have to start but the low-hanging fruit, the things that people think are really important. This is going to be the advisory body that's going to send recommendations on an annual basis to the legislature that we can act upon. And they're going to have a deadline to provide those reports to us before the budget cycle is ended so that we can incorporate that into the budget, each budget and every budget, if we want to, and we want to add more to what we're encouraging. The second thing that the first bill does, 321, is encourages every public office on a moving forward basis, if you post something online, post it in an open format, machine readable, accessible, non proprietary format. So you don't have to buy special software for it. That costs a thousand dollars to be able to read it. It's already online. Uh, it's accessible to you. Those kinds of things. If they say, if a municipality or a township or a state agency or any public office, because that's the way that we're applying this, it's any public office, cannot comply with this, they can claim a qualified exemption. These are resources, technical ability, or contrary to public policy. So you can say, I don't have the money, I don't have the technical ability to do this, I don't have, um, or it's contrary to public policy. There are things that are public records right now, cell phone numbers of individuals in Ohio, that even though it's public record, you can request it right now. It may be contrary to public policy for us to post that online so that somebody can crawl on the internet and grab your cell phone number. But that's a discussion that's gonna have to occur. And actually, I think it's gonna bring more light to the, to the fact that there are a lot of things that are public records that people don't realize are public records right now. If they put, claim that qualified exemption, they have to put it in their records retention schedule. So they're stating publicly that we don't think that we can comply with this. That's not challengeable under the law. We're not saying you can sue on that basis and challenge them. But we're saying that you can petition them to explain this. And what I'm imagining, I think what we're imagining is that People will say to their cities and to their villages and to their state agencies and to their counties and everybody else, why can't you post this online? And it might be the most basic thing. It might be budgetary information. It might be a staffing chart. It might be uh, a basic map of the boundaries of the <coughs> jurisdiction or whatever it is that they're already kind of posting online. Why wouldn't you do that in an open format that somebody can just grab very easily and quickly? So that is, in essence, the the context of the first bill. I'll let Representative Hagan talk.